Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Aris Wanjiro Gedenji. I'm the Deputy Nurse Services Manager, Tomotomo Hospital. This is Tomotomo Hospital. We are going to have a topic on hypertension in pregnancy, which will be presented by our consultant gynecologist, Dr. Jage. This is in connection because we are having a celebration for Health Week. That will be from 4th of October up to 10th. So we have Dr. Jage. Can we welcome Dr. Jage with a clap? <laughs> Dr. Jage, you are welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, um, happy to be here. And I'm happy you're all here. Uh, our topic will be quite short. Um, but before that, there's, there's one verse in the Bible I like to read. I hope I'll find it. And it's in 3rd John. It's actually 3rd John chapter 1, verses 2, thereabout. It says, Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Um, I like to start with this verse every time I'm having a presentation. So first, I want to start by thanking uh, PCA Tumutumu for this opportunity, and most importantly, Nawashukuru uh, Niwote. I feel I'm where I'm supposed to be as a gynecologist in a room full of women. This is good for me. I also want to thank Kalk TV for giving us an opportunity to uh, have this time. Kuongelea mambo ya afya zetu. And this week is going to be the health week, uh, health talk. So uh, I thought of one topic that really relates to women. Um, I remember back in creation when Adam and Eve were being ordained. I used to like to use the word ordained. They were told, go and fill the world. And what did, what did that mean? Actually, God had a sense of humor. He said, go get pregnant. And he told Adam, go impregnate Eve and get pregnant and get babies and get babies. And so I think pregnancy is divine. Because this was actually ordained from, you know, from the beginning. And the Bible says the beginning and the rest. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, something that was purposed to be very divine and very good, uh, things happened along the way, of course. <laughs> We fell into sin and we ate of the fruit and then everything else happened. Kutoka hapo dhambi ka ingia. And vile dhambi ilingia, this is what happened. We started getting diseases, we started dying, we started killing each other and the like. And more so, what we have found is something that was meant to be very okay and very divine, that is pregnancy, started getting its complications. Not to mesiskia sisi wote. Sindio? You get a child, you get pregnant, life starts moving on, and all is okay. All of a sudden, you start coming to us with complication and problems and the like. Unfortunately, we have to sort it out. And sometimes things go as we anticipate, other things don't go as we wish for. Now, one condition that is very, very common in pregnancy is all of us. How many of you don't desire to get pregnant? Okay, man. I'm even happy that guy did not put up his hands. <laughs> but I'm assuming he hoped to impregnate someone someday. Um, so we all, as women, we feel complete when we become pregnant, when we have a life inside us. It's usually so complete. And um, there are certain things that happen, and the process that happens... Uh, whereby things start going a little bit unwell. Now, one of the commonest conditions is hypertension. I'm a blood pressure kupanda. Nani na juwa blood pressure ya normal blood pressure na faku angapi? Someone? Ile BP ya kawaida normal na faku angapi? Wenye wamegua kienda antineto, umekuja antineto? Aya, umeambua BP ya kawaida ni ngapi? So It should be about 140 and 90. Okay. That should be about what we call the normal. But sometimes during pregnancy, something goes wrong. And your blood pressure, 
kupanda. Na ikipanda, it's usually not good. Because what happens, the blood pressure will now affect mama and will also affect mtoto. Okay? So it's usually not good. So that's the reason why ile wakati unakuja clinic, every time you come clinic, it's must and it's mandatory. Munanzanga kufanyua nini? Kupimwa blood pressure. Kama kuna kitu tachukuliwa every time unakuja for uh, antenatal ni blood pressure. Because you want to make sure that your blood pressure is normal. Now, unfortunately, kuna wale wanashika mimba bado wakona hypertension. Ama blood pressure yawiko juu. Now, those ones we say they have chronic hypertension. Okay? Lakini kuna wale ambao wana patwa na hypertension after kushika mimba. And that one we call it uh, um, uh, hypertension in pregnancy. And that is very, very common. Now, um, the, the one that is very particular to pregnancy, ukishika mimba, after 20 weeks, ama after four months thereabout, ukishikwa na blood pressure, after 20 weeks, now that is very concerning. We say this blood pressure imekuja kusababia, Mimba. And it has a name. Ili uh, tuwelewane vizuri. So, kuna ini mesema chronic hypertension. Umekua hauna mimba. Lakini for some reason, ulipata blood pressure. Uh, kama kuna blood pressure, unakuja unatuona, tunakuandikia dawa. Just to make sure that we maintain. Isipande wakati wa? Wakati wa mimba. Isisiende kupanda. Because kama kuna hypertension, before you get pregnant, most likely when you get pregnant, ita, ita, ita shoot zaidi. So, it's important uonekane kabla. But after 20 weeks, okay, so that can be before 20 weeks, or if after six weeks, uh, which we call after six weeks, uh, blood pressure in Andalaya after Kujifungua, then that is chronic hypertension. So, here hypertension, here mababazetu wa mezeka na nini kidney zimeanza kuleta shida, blood pressure inakuwa, hiyo ni tofauti na yule mama mjamzito. Okay? So ya mama mjamzito, tumesema inaanzia wiki ngapi? 20 weeks. Okay. And there's a reason why. The reason to that, siyo lazima mkumbuke hii ni kwamba, saile placenta ya mtoto injajishikilia kwenye nyungu ya mama, oh, on the uterus, kuna blood vessels zenye zina. Unajua, mtoto anapata chakula na, uh, na oxygen kutoka kwa mama. Sawa. Unajua napataje? So unakuwa kuna damu inaenda kwa nyungu ya mtoto, kuna vessels, alafu ndani mtoto nakuwa na nini? Na placenta, placenta inajishikilia. So zile blood vessels za mama na zile zingine za mtoto zinafanya nini? Zinashikana. So there's communication. So mtoto waste, inarudi kwa mama, chakula na oxygen, inaenda kwa? Kwa mtoto. So that's how the baby and the mother communicate. So this is what happens. So that you get enough blood pressure. Kwa mtoto, zile vessels ambazo ziko kwa uterus, zina panuka. They relax and they enlarge. Okay. So that more blood and uh, uh, we said oxygen and nutrients are able to travel to the, to the baby. For some reason which we don't understand, that is in my doctorate, that process does not happen. So hile kupanuka kwa zile vessels, haifaniki. So they remain narrow. When they remain narrow, the brain is very smart. All our bodies are very smart. I to I to ombi rosa. Na sema tunataka kupatia mtoto mdam, lakini shipa ni kidogo. So inafanya nini? Inaongezea pressure. Okay? Because now it's detected that the baby needs oxygen, it's nutrients, the blood flow is not going on. Uh, so then what happens? The mother gets hypertension. Tumelewana. So the cause of what we call preeclampsia is the pregnancy. And this is very important because Niki discuss the treatment mtaelewa kwa nini. Sawa sawa. So we see the cause of preeclampsia which is uh, you know hypertension in pregnancy is purely purely because of the pregnancy. So without pregnancy will you get uh, hypertension in pregnancy? No. no. So sometimes unasema what was meant to be so good ended up becoming problem because of sin. So the baby was supposed to be very divine and to carry the baby. Then you ask yourself, why did you tell us to go fill the world? And then you fill the world. This baby we are carrying are the ones we are giving us hypertension. Because also hypertension will give us different effects to our body. Now, 
maybe you'll ask the question, then why? What are some of the causes that will, you know, sababu gani ambazo zitafanya tushikwe na hizi hypertension in pregnancy? Hapa nitajuaje? So sometimes we don't know who is going to have preeclampsia or hypertension in pregnancy. Hatujui the process itachukua, hatujui ni wagani watapona. But what we know or what studies our science has shown us is number one, kama ni mimba yako ya kwanza, what we call first pregnancy, you are at a risk of getting hypertension in pregnancy. Sawa sawa, yu ni ya kwanza. Kama umepata ulikuwa meshika mimba na mze moja, lakini kwa shida za nyumbani, umeondoka umepata mwingine there's a high risk that unaweza pata hypertension because mwili yako sometimes it tends to kind of reject uh, the cells i'm not saying it's always true but that's also something to tunaona sawa sawa wale ambao wanashika mimba after 40 years kuendelea juu when they are old their body has also start kind of aging and the response to uh, to the pregnancy inakuwa affected kidogo so tunapata pia wale they get affected by hypertension kama uko na shida ya kidneys kama uko na hypertension there are some who have family uh, history of hypertension those one at high risk of getting hypertension in pregnancy sawa sawa so ni vizuri pia unaelewa nyumba ni kwetu kuna mtu alikuwa anashika especially our mothers what we call immediate relatives my mom will go to hypertension. So if, for example, your mom is hypertensive, there's a highly chance that you might get hypertension during birth. It doesn't mean you'll get hypertension, but there's the risk factor, what you call the risk factor, that you could be uh, hypertensive. If, again, we say this is your first pregnancy, it's very, very important that you make sure that you're getting the blood pressure tested every time you come to the clinic. And please, Uliza's sister, blood pressure yangu ningapi. So when we know ourselves, then we are able to to really uh, monitor uh, things when they change. Now, unfortunately, sometimes, tunapata, they are not really symptoms. Mwenye wea, mwenye utajua, ya kwamba, I have hypertension. Okay. So, wale ambao, tunapata wakona hypertension in pregnancy, it's usually sailo wamekuja, tunapata blood pressure zao, zimefanya nini? Zimepana. During the routine, what we call the routine checker. Umekuja, blood pressure yako yiku 150, unambu yiku 150, alafu tunasema, apana, mimi ya yiku 150, niko saa, mimi ya kuna kitu nasikia. Aya, sisa na kuambia, sa hiko 145, benye utafanya, enda upumzike for 4 hours, urelax, alafu, ukuje tena. So if you go and rest for about 4 hours, urudi tena, wachukua blood pressure, wapata hiko now 137 over 93, then you have hypertension. Tumelewana? Tumelewana? Lakini ukikuja, the first time ume Pimo blood pressure tunapata iko huko juu ya 160 ile ya juu na hii ya 110 ya chini that one is purely hypertension hata utaambiwa ngoje for hours is diagnosis of hypertension tumelewana so what i was discussing how do we make a diagnosis of hypertension number 1 if your blood pressure is above ile ya juu iko above 140 but below 160 na ile ya chini iko above 90 but below 110 you be told, ngoja kidogo, for about four hours. So we take two, two measurements. Ya kwanza na ya pili. Ya pili ukirudiwa, alafu tunapata, ya kwamba bado blood pressure iko juu, iko bado 139 or 3, ya chini iko 90 something, then you have a diagnosis of hypertension in pregnancy. Okay? Ukipatikana blood pressure imepanda. Sister takuambiaje, sasa kinyo utafanya, Enda kwenye lab, upime mkojo. And that's the reason why, when you start your antenatal, najua mna julizanga, nimeambua ni pime blood pressure, nimeambua ni pime syphilis, nimeambua ni pime mkojo, hizi zote ni zanini. Okay? Because we know, kuna zile changes abazo zo ubadilika when you're pregnant. Now, kama blood pressure iko juu, alafu upime mkojo. Mkojo tunaona, tunangalia kama kuna chembe chembe ndogo, you know, the protein. We call them proteins in urine. If you have protein in urine, now that is a confirmation that you have pre-eclampsia. Sawa, sawa. Kuna nini? Ah, isemeni vizuri. Bana. Kuna nini? So, you have pre-eclampsia. Okay. So pre-eclampsia, therefore, ni 
Blood pressure imepana na nini ingine? Na protein wapi? Ah, good. Ah, na sasa tunaelewana. So when you have high blood pressure and then there's protein in urine, that means you have a condition called preeclampsia. And preeclampsia is only and only and only in pregnant women. So for example, if I'm a man and I have hypertension and I have protein in I have protein uh, in urine, do I have preeclampsia? No, why? Because I'm not pregnant. Tumelewana? Ah, leo mtakuwa madaktari kidogo by the time you're leaving here. So we find then we you know, if I'm a man then daktari atanituma niangaliwe kidney zangu ziko namna gani, maybe zimeanza ku fail, uh, things like that. But in pregnancy, we know that is preeclampsia. Okay? So now the question is, if you have preeclampsia therefore, what do you need to know? So what you need to know is that number one, we have said that the condition is because of pregnancy and because you're pregnant. And as long as mtoto akondaniako, that condition will remain. So what do you think will be the treatment for preeclampsia? The treatment, treatment ya preeclampsia mama. The treatment for preeclampsia is to. Huh? What is the cause of preeclampsia? The pregnancy. So the treatment of pre uh, preeclampsia is getting rid of the pregnancy, but not so soon. Sasa, not so soon. So what we need to understand is the treatment and the true treatment of preeclampsia is getting rid of what we call the products of conception. Product of conception is the baby, the placenta, and the fluid and everything. That is the treatment, okay? Purely treatment. But, of course, how to go hospital, to go to preeclampsia, to go to you know, how your liver is and the like. We don't tell you now, okay, fine, mama, you have preeclampsia. Now what we need to do is to terminate the pressure. No, we don't tell you that. What we need to do is, can we manage the blood pressures? We lower the blood pressures and we help you continue with the, with the pregnancy. What we know for sure and for a fact, kama blood pressure, ma preeclampsia, itakushika very early in pregnancy, is going to be a little bit difficult moving on. Okay? We are not going to terminate the pregnancy. We still try to manage and monitor and see how you are responding, but it's going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, if we catch it a little bit later in, in pregnancy, then that's usually a good thing because the baby has matured, the baby has grown, which is a good thing. Okay. Uh, now, in terms of preeclampsia, there's a different severity. So you can have that one which is blood pressure is above 140, below 160, chini, you above 90, but below 110. That is just preeclampsia. Now, if you have them higher than that, then that is called severe Preeclampsia. Now it's a severe disease. And if you get that about 23, 24 weeks, we know that now if you have high blood pressures, what will happen is possibly it's also going to affect other parts of your body. Because when you have high blood pressure, we know all parts of our body, there's what? There's blood. Okay? And when you have high levels of blood pressure, it's going to affect almost every part of our body. No. So our kidneys, our eyes, our brain, Name them, everything, our lungs. So when we have a woman who has high blood pressures or severe preeclampsia, we'll find that they'll present, if they have you know, uh, that severity of the disease, they'll present with different symptoms. So mama akikuja rasema na umu na kichwa, that is not a good sign. Um, you know, nasiki, mostly they say nasikia kiungulio. <coughs> na umu na hapa kiungulio. We know that's usually, if you find your blood pressure is equal to you, we know you see your heart burn, apana. What that means, your liver imekua, ime enlarge kidogo, kuna uh, certain, you know, uh, mshipi hivi na shikilia uh, um, uh, uh, the, the liver, and then when it gets stretched, you're going to feel pain that almost feel kama ilia ya kiungulio. But all of a sudden, then, you know. So those are usually signs that tells us this is a severe disease. So anytime you're pregnant, anytime you're pregnant or you have your friend who's pregnant, and then they start complaining about these things, hey, 
and I felt that I was getting this very bad headache. Mostly, usually the frontal headache. Then you want to tell, hey, a bu a bu a blood pressure to one economy again. Because if the next clinic will be about six weeks, most of the time, women don't come and clear there's something really bad. They will only come when we give them a date to return to the clinic, okay? So if they say, okay, fine, for some reason, amka subu il sioni vizuri. Then you need to tell them, okay, maybe you need to really check and find what's going on. Ukeza kusikia kiungulio, of course, in pregnancy, especially early pregnancy from about, maybe about 13 to their weeks, a woman will get a bit of um, kusikia, nausea, and a bit of heartburn, that's okay. But when you're getting above 20 weeks and they're about, you're getting this pain around your chest. It's very important that we check your blood pressure and your urine. Sawa, sawa. So I've just, that I was just discussing what a woman might feel. Uh, some kufura mugu, which is usually a common presentation in pregnancy, uh, whereby, now no wengine meza kujiangalia migu zao, don't worry about it. Uh, so you'll find um, that mugu meza kufura, usually, especially um, in the morning. If you have a bit of swelling in the morning, it's not necessarily meaning you have preeclampsia. So we know during pregnancy, uh, the, the, the uterus starting to enlarge, the blood vessel that goes to the legs usually go around what we call the pelvis. And when the uterus is getting big, it, and, and, and the whole day you've been standing and walking and walking, we know that the pregnancy is going to compress on these vessels. So if you're compressing on these vessels, especially one that takes blood back to the heart, what will happen is not going to be back, you know, blood flowing back to the heart, so the legs end up swelling. And then at the end of the day, when you go and you rest in the evening and in the morning you wake up, ah, poof, everything is okay. And that's still the same reason why we say you need to lie on your side. The reason why you lie on your side is to not compress the blood vessels that take blood to the heart. So you find that your legs will not but if you're having this swelling of the legs, that could be indicating that maybe your kidneys as well, now they are getting affected by the high blood pressure. So the reason why we never include, and I had to explain the swelling of the legs, it's not as, um, um, it, it's not very, uh, very strong indicator that this could be preeclampsia. Sawa, sawa. So we have talked about the presentation, things that you need to feel for when you're pregnant, uh, when you need to see your doctor, uh, what needs to be done. Lazima pia ya mwenye ujujue. Ukienda hizi clinic tunayandanga, unapima tu blood pressure na mbigo juu, unambia buni pimeni mkojo, uwaelimishe pia wawo. Sindio? Sometimes you tend to, you know, you have a condition, you go to these clinics, tunafungua kando kando ya kiosk, tunamini, pima blood pressure, unawana hiko juu, unakuambia, ukona BP. So I Could I be having preeclampsia maybe? Then what I stuka. Okay? So the most important thing is really understanding. Now the question is how do we therefore manage hypertension in pregnancy? Unlike someone who's not pregnant with hypertension, in pregnancy there's a challenge because we consider two life. We consider you and baby, okay, or the fetus. And what we also know is the following. Zile dawa ambazo unakunyu ama unachukumia, hata chakula, inapita kwa nani? Kwa mtoto. So this is able to, of course there are other things that, uh, that don't uh, azipiti, azipiti kwa, um, kwa placenta, what we call the, the, the there's a barrier. Also, God is very smart. There are things that are not allowed to cross to the baby, but there are those that actually cross to the, to the baby. And those that cross to the baby, the effect that they give you as a mother, they will cause the same effect to the, the baby. The only problem is you take a higher dose because you are big. Okay? But then, if it's the baby, then they are going to cause a very, you know, much effect because the baby is small. So, the drugs that you use, we have very, very limited types of drugs that we use in pregnancy. So if you go somewhere, you have been told that you have hypertension, it's very important 
Kuuliza daktari hizi dawa unanipatia are they safe in pregnancy so this is what we call pregnancy medication in pregnancy or uh, safe medication in pregnancy there are those which are not safe uh, medication in, in pregnancy and that's very important for you to understand what are some of the drugs mzasikianga gani ni gani mnasikianga sana wanaona msikia methaldopa the drug called methaldopa there's a drug called nifedipine those are the medication that we give you but usienda tu useme hebu nipatie kale kadawa kadogo kared okay so please don't treat yourself if you find that you've been or if you're not sure mali umeenda umepimwa miambi kwa juu and you're not unajua kuna mali tunaendanga unapimwa alafu unaelezea una ah no here i'm not very comfortable what is actually being treated so you need to come to a hospital you need to see a doctor if possible see a, um, a gynecologist or an obstetrician then you have a discussion so number one, when you come to the hospital what do we do we need to be able to tell how the severity of the disease is is it just preeclampsia or is it severe preeclampsia okay if it's severe preeclampsia now we start having a very serious discussion now that's one number two, we also need to consider mimba yako how many weeks you know if it's about 37 oh that's good right even if it's preeclampsia you say you know what mama now blood pressure zako zimeanza kupanda juu to be adjusted amsha kidogo and then we can think about delivering the baby because we know after 37 weeks the baby is grown enough to be able to live outside the uterus if the baby is below 34 weeks and um, it's very severe then we say okay fine we have to admit you we try to control your blood pressure we have a high dose that we can give you of medication and hopefully you respond the only thing that we are doing at that time tunajaribu to kukupatia a few more days to see the baby will will grow bigger or will mature because if we get the baby when they are not mature especially their lungs they will not be able to survive outside the the uterus so we have to ascertain those things have been met before we actually make a decision so there are those that they come we give them medication ata sio za you know za mshipa tunapatia dawa and then we find they are responding very okay and then their blood pressures are controlled now for these patients who are on medication hard to aoni on the same interval kama mama mwenye hana shida yote so we book them in a clinic which is called high risk antenatal what does that mean that means we need to see you quite often sawa sawa and then we need to make sure that either we tell you aenda nyumbani unapotumia hizi dawa make sure either ununue bp machine yako ama utafute mali utaenda at least uh, three times a week we make sure that the blood pressure is being taken and we are going to educate you tell you okay your blood pressure imeanza kufika hapa please come back so when you come back two things either we are going to add the dosage or we are going to add another medication so we start with one medication mostly yo inaitwa methyl dopa tukianza na methyl dopa we see how you're responding as the pregnancy goes the effect also might increase then you come back we increase on the dosage of methyl dopa tunaanza mara mbili kwa siku mara tatu kwa siku we give you up to a certain dosage if you are still not responding we add a second drug which is called nifedipine and when we reach the maximum dose of this medication and we still find your blood pressures are not being controlled then we'll have a very very serious discussion because we know that if not well controlled and the, you know the blood pressures keep going high you might have very very bad complications and we always value the life of the mother sawa sawa tumelewana so there are those who will come to us and we tell them you know what mom we are very sorry but we'll have to terminate the pregnancy because you know you're very cruel and we'll tell them if these blood pressures are not controlled you might get a stroke or your kidneys might fail in the worst case scenario you might find a complication that we might lose your your life so but before it's usually very rare we get there um uh but if now things are really bad uh that's what we actually explain to you and we also know in those very severe situation also the baby will not grow normally the baby will grow a little bit slower um we really don't see much abnormality but what we most likely see is the baby grows a little bit uh, uh slower something we call growth uh, uh growth restriction B uh, between 
the, the size of the baby when we have an ultrasound scan. Sababu scan ina tuonesha huu mtoto kulingana na mifupa yake na you know how they have developed. They are equal to this gestation age. Okay? Na pia tunaangalia siku zako. So let's say for example uh, you are 34 weeks. Let's say based on your dates, okay? And then scan ina tuonesha based on the finding um dot on onashana you go about maybe 24 or something like that. So you see there's a huge difference. So we'll ask ourselves, does she have any condition that could be predisposing her fanya mtoto anakuwa pole pole kuliko as compared to the date. And now we call that growth restriction. And these are babies who don't grow very normally. So there are many things that we look out for. Uh, there are mothers who have had hypertension. They, they have not been coming to the clinic. When they come back, when they come to the clinic, uh, their symptoms are really bad. Their kidneys have been shutting down. And we end up taking them for dialysis. Okay? So these are conditions that are very, very, very silly. And this is the commonest medical condition that is found in pregnancy. That is 100% purely due to pregnancy. Sawa, sawa. So at what point, therefore, do we say, okay, fine, I think now it's safe. Um, uh, we, we think now it's safe. Uh, it usually, is if, if, if um, after you've delivered, now things will start changing. Because the cause of high blood pressure has been gotten rid of. Okay? So once we deliver, we deliver the placenta, we now know the body starts going back to its normal pre-pregnancy uh, condition. And... We find that most women, most women, will actually go back to their normal, their normal condition. Now, remember what we said. One of the risk factors is if you have had preeclampsia before, the chances of you getting preeclampsia in the next pregnancy is very high. It's about five times more uh, than a normal woman who has not had preeclampsia. So if you've had a preeclampsia before, please make sure that you have let us know that, hey, Dr. Ari, during my last pregnancy, I had preeclampsia. My blood pressures went high. Of course, nearly beba mtoto mpaka 40 weeks. I delivered normally and everything was okay. So um, uh, we get to know about it. And then what we'll tell you, now we really need to start observing you very closely before you get to 20 weeks. Once you get to 20 weeks, now we closely monitor your blood pressure. If we see that your blood pressure have started shooting, then we need to start putting you on medication early. This is what we know for a fact. If we start controlling your blood pressure early enough before Zipande, you have better chances that you're going to have a very smooth pregnancy. But when you come to us, when your blood pressures have started hitting 180, oh my friend, it's going to be very, 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 very difficult to Melawana. So it's very good for you to really understand what is my condition? Uh, what do I need to do? When do I need to be seen? And I've already, of, of course, explained what are some of the symptoms that I need to watch out for because these are very important. Delivery. How do we deliver you if at all we have to deliver? Now, before we talk about this delivery and this termination of the pregnancy. So if you come to me, if you come to sister and sister sees you and say, oh, your blood pressures are really bad, go see Dr. Njagi, the gynecologist. So you come to me and I'll have, I'll have a discussion with you. We'll have a very very long discussion, especially if we have to terminate your pregnancy. Let's say you are 28 weeks and your blood pressures are 180 and your urine proteins are very high and we find that uh, part of your organs have started, you know, kind of being affected, your liver is being affected, your kidneys being affected, then I will have to really discuss with you and tell you, hey, look here, mom, as much as I really want you to continue with this pregnancy, I feel that it's going to be dangerous for you and your child if mine will be to cancel you. And then I'll make a recommendation. What my recommendation will be there for, I would consider we terminate the pregnancy. Now, I don't get to decide. Sawa, sawa. You get to decide. I'll give you one story. When I was a postgraduate, a patient came and very high blood pressures. She was from a refugee camp. And we discussed, we told her, we need to terminate your pregnancy. And I, I, have, to seek, I have to seek an okay. Uh, I don't get to decide. I'll have to seek an okay from maybe Sister Kimondo or someone from the, uh, a medic from a different department. So we have to be three. Where I say, I'm recommending, as a consultant, I'm recommending termination of pregnancy because abortion is not allowed in, a, you know, it's, it's not allowed in a county for this and this and this and this. And then they'll have to say, okay, fine, agree. Oh, fine, agree. So when we three of us then 
you know, we agree that I think termination of the pregnancy, and then you have to give us a go-ahead, whereby we are going to terminate your pregnancy. It's very, very difficult situation, not only for you, but only for us if we have to make that. It's very, very difficult uh, uh, decision. And none of us wants to really make a decision whereby you've been longing to, you know, uh, to, to become pregnant, and then now we have to tell you that you have to terminate the pregnancy. But we have to uh, consider your life before the life of the baby. You always are pri always, always you mothers are our priority. Um, so if now we say we have to terminate the pregnancy, fine. It's going to depend on different things. Uh, can you can you deliver normally? Uh, have you had a previous uh, cesarean section? Is there any um, any contraindication? Then we'll take you to theater, open the uterus, and then remove the baby. We'll still maintain your you know, medication, and then we are going to monitor you, make sure that blood, the blood pressures are actually are falling off. In terms of your 37 weeks and everything is okay and no indication, you know, gives us a reason why we should deliver you through cesarean section, then there are medication that we'll give you, and then we are going to initiate labor, and then you are going to deliver, okay? Never go to a hospital, and please understand me very, very well. Never go to a hospital, or come, oh, you have hypertension, oh, your blood pressures are too bad, please, we need to rush you to the operating theater. Please, no, 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 don't agree, okay? The best way to deliver a mother who is above 37, is to vaginal delivery. Don't be, and whatever we tell you, take it as a, as a gospel truth. There are more complications you can get if you go to theatre. I'm not saying don't say no, but the moment we tell you yes, go to theatre, it depends. And then ask why. You see, you have the rights as the patient. Why am I going to theatre? Why can I not deliver vaginally? If they tell you, oh, you cannot deliver vaginally because you have preeclampsia said, no, I met someone called Dr. Jaggi and he said, preeclampsia is not an indication for cesarean section. As a matter of fact, I feel I would do well by delivering normally. But, but, if you labor for a long time, and then maybe they have done a test, which we are able to do here, and we check how your baby is doing, and you find that your baby is a little bit affected, then we might indicate you, you know, do an indication to have Cesarean section. So cesarean section, preeclampsia is not an indication unless, unless there's another indication. Either the baby is not doing well or the mother cannot push. Those are the only two indications to actually deliver it. If you have high preeclampsia, we say this baby should come out within six hours. But the most important thing, this is very important thing, is we need to first sukishanini, BP, then we are able to, to now plan for your delivery. The biggest mistake I've seen people do, you come up with very high blood pressures, and everyone is getting all scared, and they are rushing you to theater. So the decision on who to deliver and when to deliver is going to depend on, one, what? Their condition or severity of their preeclampsia, the gestation age, ama mtoto wakona, wikingapi. Okay? Those are two very important things. And then we'll follow you up even after delivery. And then after delivery, transa kushukisha, the blood pressure, pole pole, pole uh, dawa, as much as blood pressure is in a shuka. And then if your blood pressure continues after six weeks of treatment, then that means you have chronic hypertension. And then it's only after that now we'll say, you know what, mama, it's time now, I think you need to see to see a physician, and we send you to a physician, now a physician who is going to follow you up. And the physician now will have more option of medication, might change you from one medication to another medication, because at that time, there's no risk of using any other medication other than the one that we're using pregnancy. Sour, sour. I think I am done. So that preeclampsia. So now we are going to take questions. And if you don't ask questions, I'll ask questions. Any questions? Yes.
If the patient comes to you with those high pressures, say above 200 over whatever, 120, and uh, they have the severe features, their kidneys are getting damaged, their liver, we've said we want the baby out in six hours, right? But first we have to lower the pressures. How low do we want to go before we plan oh. to deliver? Okay. Well, your question, I think, has triggered me to answer one more question. Now, um, since you've mentioned very high blood pressure, and remember I said, I had mentioned that sometimes these high blood pressures cause issues in your brain. Now, we say there's, there's preeclampsia, we say there's severe preeclampsia, to melawana. There's another condition, as before I answer your question, there's another condition called eclampsia. Okay? Eclampsia, ni saile mgonyo anapata fits, ama conversions. Now, if you have preeclampsia with conversion, we call that eclampsia. So, and now that is the, now the very severe part of the, uh, of the condition. Um, again, the reason I had not discussed it, I'll answer it, is because really um, it, that now comes to our management. Now, when you have very high blood pressure, two things, we have to lower them. And once we lower them, we just don't lower them, poof, because then, uh, you know, your body is not... So we have to gently lower them. Now, what we do, we give you medication, yam shipper, IV medication. So we have to... Mostly what we use is a medication that is called hydralazine. Now, our interest is on the ile achini. Ile, you know, BP na guanga ya june achini. So the, the, the ile achini, we have to bring it down to about 110 or lower. That's when now we feel that this patient is a bit stable to take any intervention. So before we initiate any intervention, the first and the acute management preeclampsia or eclampsia is number one to control the blood pressure. If this patient therefore has eclampsia, we also have to control the conversion. And there's a medication we also give for conversion. We call it um, uh, magnesium sulfate. So these are medications that we might give. If you have very high blood pressure, bad huja convulse, there's a medication we might inject you to prevent you now getting to eclampsia or what we call on or what we find patient convulsing. So that is our duty now to first bring the blood pressures low. And this will take about an hour. There are patients who are not going to respond, and now those are the very difficult patients. I hope we don't get that, we've not gotten that. But there are those patients that who are not going to respond to this medication and their blood pressures are going to remain very high. Now, what we know, these are patients who might be very now difficult even after treatment. Uh, and we have to be ready for, for this patient. These are patients which we think that the kidneys might have effects. And these are patients, even after delivery, they might need a little bit of uh, you know, intensive care, maybe taking them to HDU or sometimes even in ICU. Um, but the first management is to lower the blood pressure. Now, sometimes you go to a place whereby they are bringing your blood pressures below 90. Now that's not good. Because your body has already adapted to high blood pressures. Okay? And there are certain part of your organs which are now uh, responding to, um, uh, to high blood pressures. And the moment you just bring it poof down, what is going to happen is that um, these organs are not going to now get good supply of blood, you know, of blood because uh, um, the pressure has been very lowered. So when we are lowering the blood pressure, we have to be very careful. We have to bring it very slowly and very gently. Once we get it where we want it to be, then we have to maintain it at that point. Did that answer the question? Less than 110. Less than 110. Uh, the diastolic or the low, yeah, the diastolic. We really don't mind much about the systolic. Yes. Any other question? A question from the patient. Yes, yes, yes. So in terms of using magnesium sulfate, especially with uh, management of uh, eclampsia, we have cases now a patient is Allergic to sulfur, right? Yes. So like a role of any other medication, because now like with diazepam, there's always an issue about uh, now the bonding time with the mother, yes. especially after delivery. Yes. So like, is there any other? Apparently, apparently there has not been, I have not found, we've not found any 
any literature of complication from using magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate. Right? Uh, it has been thought to be a very safe drug. The reason why is it our zingine is uh, um, um, the, the anticonvulsant medication uh, like diazepam is their effect is very, very extensive. And very small dose, you know, gives you very, you know, it's a very wide range of effect to the patient. So you find the patient might, uh, uh, might be completely knocked out. I mean, by that you really put to sleep, it it's really sedates you, Kabisa. And we really don't want this patient completely, completely sedated. But this role of these drugs, there's this, uh, there, there's lore of these drugs, uh, if you find that you've given magnesium sulfate and, you know, the patient are still getting convulsion, converse, you've given your maximum dose. And we have a certain protocol on how we give magnesium sulfate. You have given your maximum dose, uh, you've given your, um, uh, uh, the patient get a recurrent of a, you know, of a feed, you give your additional drug, then there's role of um, uh, diazepam and the like. Unfortunately, they are not the first line medication that we use. And we've not found any, uh, even patient who comes and say, oh, I'm allergic to, to sulfur. Uh, we've not seen any reaction with magnesium. So it's been found to be a very safe drug. But it's not an antihypertensive. We go wrong sometimes. It has no role in, I mean, it has effects, but has no role in antihypertensive. Uh, so it's a drug that will, you know, kind of. Uh, the other thing, and maybe this to us more to the patient, is the question that is asked, you want this patient to go into labor, they start laboring, and then you, unapatia magnesium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, now relax, I eat a relaxed uterus? No, no, no. The mechanism of action of uterine contraction is different from uh, the response from magnesium sulfate. And what we find is, once labor a mama in meanza, you can never stop it. It never stops. It doesn't matter. You can prevent it from happening, especially those who, you know, on anza who part on a, uh, labor a little bit early, we know if Edipin works, but once it has started, you don't stop it. All right, question from the patient. Any question? No question? All right. Fine. If there's no question, thank you so much. We want to thank you for uh, joining us and being part of this talk. How many of you thought it was helpful? Ah, good. At least now we know what is preeclampsia, right? <laughs> So, so again, as we say, ours to you is to wish you good health and uh, to wish you happiness. I feel that pregnancy should be a very, very enjoyable experience. And more importantly is for us to promise and to a certain, to, you know, uh, vow to you that we will take care of you here in, you know, uh, uh, PCA Tumutumu Hospital in case of any issues, any concern. If... Um, uh, uh, if you're attending our clinics here, please see Sister Kimondo, and uh, she'll be able to ask your questions. If you feel that there's something that was not well addressed, always ask, can I see Sister Kimondo? She'll be able to answer questions and whatever uh, we need to discuss. She'll always reach out to me. She'll tell me things that uh, we need to help you to make sure that your experience here is, um, is a great experience and um, you enjoy your 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 journey in pregnancy. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll have uh, Sister Alice finish for us. And from me to you is to say thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Njage. We are very grateful. Now we have information. Information is power. We here at Tomotomo Hospital, we like to give our clients information because we are esteemed customers. We are very grateful. Thank you for, so much for the time you have taken. And I'm sure in the future, Dr. Jaggi, you give more topics on, the, uh, on other areas yes. so that our patient can have information and can be, take, be able to take care of their own health. We usually say health for you is the, the most precious asset. Otherwise, God bless you so much. Thank you, our viewers. God bless you so much. We at Tomotomo Hospital, we welcome everybody and everyone because we are part of the, of the bigger family from Kenya. Thank you so much.